if you need cash for any reason, including to invest and get ahead on some of your goals, you don't necessarily have to earn more. You can also, no shocker, spend less. So do you know where every penny goes? Is every penny you're spending spent to serve your greater well-being? In almost every budget I've ever seen, there are you know, a few required budget categories that you don't really have a choice about. I mean, the size you have a choice about. You, you don't have to live in a great you know, three-bedroom place. You may live two to a room in a two-bedroom place, right? You, but you got to pay rent. You got to eat. You don't have to eat organic food, but you got to eat. And today, a cell phone is pretty necessary for any kind of work you're going to do. Uh, but there's also a bunch of other items that are totally not required. Streaming services, you know, gym membership, organic food that we mentioned uh, a minute ago, personal services, somebody, you know, massages, alternative medicines. There's a lot of things that we do and spend money on that aren't necessities so much. And if you really want to put more towards savings, spending less is key. You know, maybe cutting back on some of these makes a ton of sense. Even the very best budgets, weak. I am always surprised when I look at my own bank statements or credit card statements, which doesn't happen often, but when it does, I often discover something. You know, I find monthly charges I wasn't aware of. I discover one of my kids has gone on a, you know, an app purchasing rampage, or I sometimes discover that I'm paying for a bundled service that I only use part of the bundle in. This actually happened to me recently. So we get our, my family gets our cell phones, our internet access, and our home phone. Don't ask. We have a gate and that has to be tied to the home phone. So we have to have a home phone. Anyway, we get those three and we get a modem and we get a router through our telecom carrier. And when we signed up, the modem lease was included in the bundle for 10 bucks a month. A couple years into the lease, we replaced the modem with a new modem that we purchased, but we just put the old modem to the side and we didn't even realize that we remember that we were paying this lease rate on it. And about three years passed until we did realize that, oh my God, we're paying 10 bucks a month for this modem that we aren't using and have not been using for 36 months. And we ended up saying, okay, how do we get out of this? We called the company and they said, we got to return the modem. So when we returned the modem, we realized we get an additional 150 back in equipment charge that was being just held because we had the modem. If we would have thrown the modem away, we wouldn't have gotten 150 bucks. And we did spend $10 a month for 36 months unnecessarily. So all in, that was 500 bucks. When we turned it in, we got the 150 bucks back, even though there was no value to the modem. Like the modem was old and it wasn't even valuable as parts anymore. Anyway, I've never gone through a budget with anyone without finding something that they were spending money on. And it's not me judging it, but then they realized, we're saying, you know what, this really isn't adding anything to my quality of life. So go through the credit card statements and bank statements and look at those regular monthly charges, see what's included in them, see what's not necessary. If you're doubling up on anything, can you cut a streaming service? Can you find cheaper car insurance? Can you pay for a reduced gym membership? Or, you know, YouTube has hundreds, thousands, I don't know if I'd say millions, but they've got workout routines you can just do, you know, just hit play on the, on a YouTube video for 30 minutes. You, you have a, you've got a workout you can do in your living room. 50 bucks a week in savings at 7% interest is $34,000 after 10 years. It's almost a quarter million dollars after 30 years. Little things become big things in time. And calling the little things requires a regular effort. Reducing your regular spending frees up cash for saving. At the same time, you know, there's stuff. One way to create a little bit of additional liquidity is to reduce the amount of stuff that we have. Now, I'm not talking about reducing or minimizing your lifestyle. I want you to have fun, do things you enjoy, enjoy your life, but don't just put it on autopilot without reviewing it. Occasionally go back and take a look at the volume. Can you minimize? Can you sell anything? At the very least, we can all, you know, hit the pause button before we buy something new.